going through airport security and you've been good, you've taken off all your jewellery, put your phone in the bucket, belt off too, and yet when you go through the scanner, the alarm still goes off. Well, when this happens, we, we call this a false positive. It's when the alarm goes off for no apparent reason and ends up in you getting the... Uh, is all happening you you suddenly remember you left like a, a tube of toothpaste or something in your hand luggage and yet that manages to go through the scanner no problem when this happens we call the outcome a false negative so in other words false positives and negatives are when the outcomes of a, a test or experiment doesn't actually reflect what happened in reality and these errors can apply to all kinds of things, from security systems to things like forensic evidence and even cancer screenings. And so they're really important for us to understand because, well, they can affect our personal lives, especially with this whole COVID situation, as I'll explain shortly. But before I go any further, first we have to deal with this abomination. Now, you may have heard these delightfully clear and not remotely confusing terms being used in medicine before. Sensitivity is how often a test gives a positive result for all actual cases, which means it's equal to 1 minus the false negative rate. And specificity is how often a test gives a negative result for all non-cases, so it's equal to 1 minus the false positive rate. But if you're anything like me, then honestly this is about as memorable as someone's name you just got told at a conference, so here's a handier way of remembering them. A mouse's existence mostly seems to be this sort of abject misery of stress, you know, constantly freaking out at anything that moves. Which, to be fair, is pretty justified, seeing as how small and vulnerable they are, and so they have to make sure they catch every real threat in order to just survive. And so to put that into medical terms, that means they are going for 100% sensitivity to danger because they simply can't handle any false negatives. Then at the other end of the spectrum, we have this guy. Being a lion means that you kind of lord over everyone. And when you're at the top of the food chain, you don't have to worry about getting eaten much. And so lions tend to hate being bothered about anything unless it's absolutely necessary. And so to put that into medical speak, it means that lions are 100% specific because, well, they can't stand for any false positives that make them have to move. So in an ideal world, we want to ensure that whatever test we're using to measure something has both a low false positive and low false negative rate so that it's maximally accurate. But in reality, that can be very hard to do as often there's a direct trade-off between these two things. Like it's hard for a mouse to simultaneously be alert for danger at all times, but also hang out in the sun like a lion all day. So depending on the situation, we typically prefer to maximize one over the other, depending on which outcome is worse. Like with something like an airport scanner, even though terrorists are fortunately very rare, a false negative is still really, really bad because, well, 9-11. And the same is largely true for disease diagnosis. While obviously doctors would prefer to have a perfectly accurate track record, you'd still rather your tests give the odd false positive and needlessly worry someone than let someone who really does have cancer slip through the net and then not get the urgent treatment that they need. However, there are some situations where having a high false positive rate can be just as dangerous, and unfortunately COVID-19 might be one of them. To understand why, let's imagine we have a thousand people who want to test for COVID. And at the time of testing, we predict that, say, roughly 2% of the general population has actually had the virus. And let's say the test we're going to use, in this case an antibody test, has these error rates. Which, by the way, are the accuracy of some of the tests in real life. So given all this information, what do you think the likelihood is that if you end up testing positive, that you actually had COVID in this instance? Before you try and calculate it, take a moment to just feel out whatever number first pops into your head. If you're anything like me, the first thing that came to mind was something like, well, a little under 94%, right? I mean, surely whatever it is, it's got to be more likely that you've had the disease than you've not had it, considering you've had a positive test result, right? Well, bizarrely, that's actually completely not the case. Despite the positive test result, we are still most likely to have not had the virus in this instance. And here's why. 
So because of the 2% estimated background rate at the time of testing, then out of those 1,000 people, on average, only 20 will have actually had the COVs, and well, that means 980 haven't. Then, because of the test's 95% sensitivity and 5% false negative rate, 19 of those 20 cases correctly test positive, and one unfortunate soul gets a false negative. Meanwhile, out of the 980 who haven't had the virus, 94% of them get the true negative result. But crucially, the other 6% get a false positive result, and that equals 59 people. So if we then compare these two categories of positive test results, we can see that the false ones outweigh the true ones by around 3 to 1. In other words, despite your positive test results, you are still way more likely to have never had the virus. And to be abundantly clear, this relates only to this specific hypothetical example. And this counterintuitive phenomenon is known as the false positive paradox. It's a thing that happens when a disease is still rare enough that the base rate, which is the name for the fraction of the general population who's actually had the disease, is smaller than the false positive rate of the test. And this completely messes with our heads because, well, we tend to focus on the high accuracy of the test and forget about this crucial first step of taking the base rate into account. And this common error has a name too. We call it base rate neglect. And it's a consistent problem for both scientists and public alike. So just think about what this means for COVID testing if the background rate of infection is still low enough right now to be similar to the false positive rate of whatever test we're using. Then the majority of people who do test positive won't actually have immunity. So while widespread testing is crucial, individually we still need to tread very carefully with the results we get until we confidently know what the true background rate of infection currently is. It's also really important to remember that base rate neglect and the false positive paradox aren't just dangerous for things like healthcare, they can screw up lives in other ways too. And in fact, the most egregious example of this is the case of poor Sally Clark. Now, Sally was a seemingly ordinary, law-abiding woman, but who found herself at the centre of a national murder case after two of her infant children died when they reached a few months old. Her defence argued that they had both died of what is known as sudden infant death syndrome, a rare but awful natural phenomenon. But the prosecutors argued that this disease was so rare that the odds of both of these children independently dying of it was as slim as 1 in 73 million. Odds so tiny that, despite there being no other evidence against her, it was sufficient enough to convince judge and jury to imprison Sally for life. But in reality, there were so many outrageously basic errors in their analysis that they almost certainly sent an innocent woman to jail. Firstly, their calculation of 8,500 squared to get to 1 in 73 million makes the huge assumption that the two deaths were completely independent events. But this whole assumption is not remotely based in reality, because it's now known that SIDS can run in families due to both environmental and genetic risk factors, and that alone would have reduced the prosecution's odds argument drastically. But the prosecutor's real statistical crime was base rate neglect. Because while double SIDS deaths are extremely rare, guess what are even rarer? Women with zero history of mental illness or criminal activity deciding to kill their babies. And if they'd actually done their numbers properly and factored in the base rate, then the likelihood of her being guilty would have gone from being a near certainty to somewhere around only 13%. But despite the fact that her entire conviction was based upon just one piece of evidence that was in actuality a pile of statistical horse crap, it took three years to get Sally's conviction overturned. And even more tragically, Sally never really recovered from her ordeal, and she ended up passing away a few years later. So yeah, sorry for the depressing story, but it really showcases why we need to understand these kinds of fallacies and concepts, because COVID is forcing us to risk assess our own health right now. And beyond that, we might end up on a jury where we literally hold someone else's lives in our hands. So it's really important we know how to, or we learn how to evaluate evidence properly. And more generally, in this age of mass information with all these sort of conflicting theories about the world going around, 
It's helpful to find a sort of quantified approach to truth-seeking, finding a balance that keeps both our false positives and false negatives as low as possible. We don't want to be an overly sceptical lion dismissing any new unconventional theory we read, but at the same time, we don't want to be a gullible mouse either, believing any and every scary new or weird idea or theory the internet comes up with. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure you to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be making more videos on these kind of sort of counterintuitive statistical topics. And of course, please like and share this video if you found it helpful because, well, you know how the internet works. If you do that, then more people see it. And I'd love that. So thank you. See you next time. Oh, and what do you think of my green screen?